Hey guys, it's Hannah here and today I have an empties video for you guys. So I usually try to do these every two months, um, but last month it just didn't quite work out that I got this filmed. So there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of things here that I've used up in the last three months. And a lot of it is makeup. So let's just get into it. I've obviously been doing really well with my project pan because I have a lot. Alright, let's start with primer. I have two primers. One I finished, one I am decluttering. Um, and these are both from my project pan. So the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. This is the 60ml or 2 fluid ounce size, the jumbo size. I really like that, this stuff, that's why I have the jumbo size. I've repurchased this many, many times um, and I'm a big fan. And I've used that up. The one that I'm decluttering is the Revlon Photo Ready Prime Plus Mattifying and Pore Reducing Primer. The reason I'm decluttering this is because the stick on the pump came off and this product is extremely thick. So it's not something you can just like pour into your hand or even like it is an extremely thick product you need to be able to pump it out and the pump is broken so I can't use this product. I didn't find it was a fantastic primer anyway I was only using it up to use it up um, but yeah not too upset to see that. Uh, for complexion products, I have the CoverGirl Clean Matte BB Cream for oily skin in the shade 510, 510 Fair. This is not fair. I don't know what universe you need to be in for this to be fair. This is so dark on me that I had to mix it with other products to make it work. As a BB cream for oily skin, it was fantastic. But it is too dark for me to wear on its own. And then I lose the BB cream effect. So unfortunately it's not something... To, sorry, sorry. To get the right shade and mix it with something, I lose the BB cream effect. So doesn't really work if you are actually quite fair. But if you are light or darker, if you are a light skin, get the fair and go lighter than you think because this is, yeah, super dark, but a really nice formulation. I have two powders. Let's check, I don't have any other base products lying around. No. I have two powders. The first is the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. This was a five gram little mini that I picked up at the start of the year at the Estee Lauder corporate store. Becker is no longer a brand, so I really wanted to try this powder so when I could pick it up and deep discount once it had been discontinued, I was really happy to do so. I liked it, it was fine, I'm glad I didn't purchase it full price and I'm glad I didn't purchase a full size when I wanted to. Um, the Glossier Wowder. I quite like this powder, I do not like the packaging. Um, it's just like a, it's a mesh. Um, which is really nice if you probably have drier skin, but I have oilier skin and I really need to set down my base product So I need quite a lot of powder and it's hard to disperse a lot of powder With this packaging the powder itself is a beautiful powder I love the way it sits on the skin and wears throughout the day but it is just frustrating for me to get enough powder out for the purpose that I needed to so that's that one. Okay. Eye products. Alright, so I've got eye products, lip products, and setting sprays, and then I will move on to skincare. Alright, eye products, mascaras, the milk makeup cush mascara. I don't love this mascara. I feel like it needs to dry out quite a bit and even then it really gives quite a natural look to the lashes. 
which is fine, but if you really want something vol voluminous, um, and the brush is quite big so it can get quite messy because the brush just kind of takes up my whole eye and can really quite easily get onto my eyelid and make a mess. So it's not my favorite. If I get it, I use it, but it's not a love. Something that I do love is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes. This is the second one of these I've gone through this year. It has a really interesting wand where it's only got bristles on the top and bottom and then nothing in the middle. So you can really build up product by using this side and then using the comb to brush it through. I find it gives a really full looked, full look lash. Um, but you do need to be careful to not overload with product or it can get spidery. But I feel like once you know how to use this wand, fantastic. Two brow products. First, the Kosas Air Brow in Taupe. I really enjoy a tinted brow gel. Gimme Brow was my favourite for a very long time until they had to pull it from the market and reformulate it and take out the fibres because people or as many fibres because people were using it mascara and then getting fibres in their eyes and making complaints. Anyway. I don't love this. It is basically where I'm at. It was fine. It was a good tinted brow gel, but it just wasn't my favourite. Um, the Glossier Boy Brow, I'm currently using the Emco Fibre Brow. That's really nice. Not my favourite. And then I'm finally decluttering my Benefit Cabrow, which is so old. I don't use pomades in my brows. I go for a very natural fluffy brow with a little bit of pencil and mostly a tinted gel. Um, but this is very old and needs to go. But it was a good product if you like a pomade. And then the Bobbi Brown Longwear Cream Shadow in Nude Beach. This is a really beautiful formula. This was one of the matte shades. It's a dusty mauve colour. Um, really beautiful. This was in my project pan. Um, and it took me like six months to use up. But I did it. And that's one cream shadow out of the collection. For lip products, I have the NARS Dolce Vita Afterglow Lip Balm. Just a tinted lip balm. I don't find these to be super hydrating um, as a lip balm. More just a sheer wash of colour. Which if that's what you're after, great. That's what you're going to get. It was fine. I don't love this formula. I've used one of the full sizes up before. And it's, again, it's fine. It's not something I love. But if I have it, I use it. And then ignore the fact that this is missing its cap. Because my current Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask, I lost the lid for, so I took the lid off this one and replaced it. This is the Mint Choco Lip Sleeping Mask. It has no scent because it's been without a lid. I really like the Laneige Lip Sleeping Masks. I've been using my minis up. I enjoy them. Not my favourite scent on this one, but I used it. I enjoyed it. And then setting sprays. I have a mini Fix Plus Rose that I used up. I like Fix Plus, don't like the spray. The spray on the minis are even worse than the spray on the full size. It spurts much more on the mini than it does on the full size. It is what it is. Then the Urban Decay All Nighter Ultra Matte. I didn't notice this to be much different than the regular All Nighter. And yeah. <laughs> I really like All Nighter, I really like Urban Decay, but I am currently using a new setting spray, which you'll need to stay tuned for next week to see the haul. And I like the mister on the new one much more than I like the mister on this. So, I don't know, I think Urban Decay is going to be dethroned for um, setting sprays for me. Well, wow, it's a good one. Alright, skincare. Let's start with the samples I worked on the other month for my project pan. Is that all of it? Yes. 
tool, my project pan in July to August or June to July. One of those months, June to July. Um, I was working on the sachets in my collection and I worked through all of them. So here are my thoughts. The Peter Thomas Roth Water Clench Hyaluronic Glow Serum. This is quite a nice hyaluronic acid serum. If you are drier and you do prefer a bit of that glow, I think this would be a nice one. For me, I don't need the glow. I just need the hydration of hyaluronic acid. So it wasn't perfect for me, but it hydrated my skin. Same with the niacinamide glow dew drops. If you are a dry skin person and you want to try niacinamide in your routine, I think this would be great. For me, I enjoy the oil control benefits of niacinamide as well as the brightening elements. So this doesn't, is not quite what I want from my niacinamide, but it looked really nice on the skin if you are drier. Dermalogica Pre Cleanse. This is kind of an OG product. It is an oil cleanser. It's fine. I personally prefer a balm. I just like how they go into the skin more than an oil. But this is a popular product for a reason. It really moves your makeup well. The SkinCeuticals Hydrating B5 Gel. I prefer this over the Peter Thomas Roth. Was it Peter Thomas Roth? Yep, the Peter Thomas Roth. Hyaluronic acid. I preferred this. This is more my jam of a hyaluronic hydrating serum. Um, but it is very expensive and I do not see myself purchasing it in the future because I have hyaluronic acids that I enjoy that are much less expensive than this. Kate Somerville Goat Milk Cleanser. It's fine. Um, it is, again, more that hydrating super sensitive so if I was having an eczema flare-up which I actually knock on wood haven't had in quite a while I might have enjoyed this more but with my skin being in pretty good condition at the moment particularly in winter while the hydration was nice um I don't particularly need a hydrating cleanser so it was fine not something I can see myself repurchasing same with the Laneige Creaming Skin Moisturising Toner. This was a hydrating toner, which is just something I don't need because as it is for normal to dry skin. It was a nice extra thin layer of hydration in the evening, but it's not something I will regularly need in my routine because as we know, I am combo oily. And even though I'm currently in winter, so my skin is more on the normal side than the oily side. I yeah, don't ever veer into the dry side. Kate Somerville Eradicate. So this was a cleanser for acne clearing and I did have a few breakouts when I used this product. I don't like my acne clearing products in my cleanser because then I find it can strip the skin that isn't experiencing acne particularly when I am currently in a more normal tone so this has sulfur as the active ingredient I would rather put on a pimple patch or a spot treatment particularly on a breakout rather than use a breakout I already use a BHA serum all over and niacinamide all over which are both anti-acne anti-congestion products so if I do have a breakout, I'd rather treat it specifically rather than my whole face and then accidentally strip the skin that's not breaking out and then cause issues there. So long story short, I don't love my acne products in a cl my cleansing step because I'd rather just target the problem. So I wouldn't repurchase that one. Now the Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse talked about that. Alpha H Liquid Gold. This was like the first glycolic acid product in a, from an Australian brand. Um, for me, I just never got into it. I never found it to be really fantastic for my skin. There are other um, acid products that I prefer. This is just not one of them. 
MZ Skin Soothe uh, Soothe and Smooth Hyaluronic Brightening Eye Complex. This was an eye cream. It hydrated my under eyes. I don't know how expensive this is. Possibly quite a bit, but I didn't notice anything more than a normal eye cream. The Mecca Cosmetica Hydrating Moisturizer with Hyaluronic Acid. This is too thick for my skin. I wouldn't use it. I used it at night in winter. And it was fine, but not something I'd repurchase. The Cinch Sleep and Glow 5-in-1 Overnight Booster Mask with Pawpaw and Pineapple Enzymes. Uh, if I wanted a product that exfoliated while being a moisturizer, I would use the Glow Recipe Watermelon Sleeping Mask. The Kale and Spinach Green Tea Hyaluronic Superfood Air Whip Moisture Cream from Use to the People to the people. I could use this at night. It was thin enough for me to use at night to hydrate without being too much. I don't know. It was quite nice, actually. That was, yeah, pretty good. And then the eye cream that I get as a sample from YesStyle that I can never pronounce. It's an eye cream. I use it. It's fine. To me, eye creams besides the, um, Glow Recipe Retinol eye cream. Every other eye cream I've used has just been pretty basic eye cream and could be pretty much anything. So there's that. All right. Let's keep going. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a long video. All right, let's do some Glow Recipe. The Watermelon Glow PHA BHA Pore Tight Toner. This is more hydrating than I need in summer. Um, yeah, it's quite a hydrating toner to be a BHA product. I prefer the Polar's Choice. I just think that works all year round on my skin. Um, whereas this added a bit more hydration than I needed in summer. But it's a good product. If you have more normal skin, um, or normal to dry skin even, and you still want a BHA product, maybe look at this. But if you're oily, I would go the Sun, no. Not Sunday Riley. Paula's Choice. And then, as I mentioned, the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Sleeping Mask would be my moisturizer of choice if I wanted an acid in a moisturizer. But I very rarely want an acid in a moisturizer. I'm just using these ones up. So there's that. It's a good product. I enjoy it. I just don't. It's a very gel-based product. Um, if you don't like a gel-based product, you won't like it. Um, it does have actives in it rather than just being a moisturizer. So if you don't like that, you won't like it. Um, as I said, I'm just using them to use them up. I don't mind them, but it's not something I need in my routine. Keeping with a moisturizer, this is the Touch of the Water Cream. This is just a little baby. That was in my travel makeup bag, travel skincare, toiletries, and I used it up. I like this stuff. It's really nice on the skin. Big fan of that moisturizer. Um, Caudalie Beauty Elixir. This smells very herbally. Very herbal. Don't love the smell, but it was fine. It was a mist. It hydrated my skin and prepped it for my skincare. So there's that. I prefer my acid in a treatment serum product. This is the Biosant Squalene and Lactic Acid Resurfacing Night Serum. This is just my preferred method of active acids. Um, this was probably, being a squalane-based product, probably more hydrating than I needed. Um, I'm currently using some other products. But I currently don't have another serum, full-size serum in my um, backups for my acid step, I have a toner, which will be the next thing I try. Um, but I quite like lactic acid as an exfoliant because it is gentler on the skin and I can get dermatitis and my skin can freak out if it is has too much going on. So I do like a lactic, but it, my skin can handle other things as well. Cleansing products, I have two. 
the Then I Met You Living Cleansing Balm. This stuff smells beautiful. It broke down makeup really well. It was a really nice cleansing balm. It is not super easy to get here. And I have 7 million cleansing balms in my backup at the moment. So it's not one I've repurchased right away, but I would definitely consider it. One I have repurchased multiple times and will repurchase again soon. The Pharmacy Green Clean Makeup Meltway Cleansing Balm. This is from the holiday set last year where it had three scented of the 50ml size. This is the Lemonade Mint. I've had the full size. I've had a mini size. I have these ones and I will purchase the peach one soon. Um, yeah, I really like this cleansing balm. Currently liking the scents they come out with and I am intrigued to see if they'll come out with scented minis again this holidays. Not that I need any more, but I would buy it anyway. Um, on that same vein, the Sephora Eye Makeup Remover. Waterproof Eye Makeup Remover. Um, I don't know why this has a CF on it. I have the one with the black cap currently. It's the eye makeup remover I use because it is pretty inexpensive. Um, and it does the job. I forgot. I have a MAC Kix Plus full size in here as well. Which I like. And I will back to MAC and not throw in the bin. Alright. My still got skincare. Alright. Three mini skincare products. The... Dr. Dennis Gross IPL Dark Spot Concentrated Serum. This is, was a vitamin C product that I had in my backup drawer. And then when I went to open it, it has the dreaded expired vitamin C color. If you have a vitamin C that is actually this orange and was not when you purchased it, that means it has gone bad. And that makes me really sad because this was a... Really, this is a very expensive product and this value of this was like $35 for this sample. And I was really interested in using it, but I left it for too long and it is gone bad. Makes me sad. Dermalogica Sound Sleep Cocoon Transformative Night Gel. No, it was fine. It was a night cream. I don't understand the whole Sound Sleep Cocoon thing. What I do like, the Biosance Tea Tree Balancing facial oil. Squalane is my preferred oil of choice on my oily skin as it um, mimics lipid of your natural skin and balances oil production. Tea tree is nice to just kind of do a little bit of a spot zap everywhere and I'm not worried about this drying out my skin like I am the Kate Somerville cleanser because it's obviously based in an oil a hydrating oil so I'm not worried about it drying out my skin. I use this on nights where I use my acids. I finish my makeup routine, my nighttime skincare routine with this when I use an acid. Alright, still going with the skin, the face skin and then I'll move to body skin. Um, Dermalogica Clear Start SPF 30 Clearing Defense. I would not repurchase this. It was a fine sunscreen. I didn't think it was bad until I tried the Paula's Choice and realized how much this pilled up under my makeup. I knew it pilled up. I knew I had to be careful when applying makeup over the top of this, but I thought that was just because I was using a sunscreen and I hadn't used one in so long. The Paula's Choice doesn't do that to me, so I would not repurchase this because it made makeup application over the top just challenging. Right up to body. Body skincare. Well, kind of skin skincare. Nature's Bounty Optimal Strength Hair Skin Nail Vitamins. If you want to see results in the strength and condition of your hair, skin, or na and or nails, this stuff is great. I get it on iHerb. It's like $13 a bottle. Maybe more, maybe less. I can't remember exactly. But... I really like this stuff. I find it super effective. Now, body. Hand counts as body, right? Uh, Bath and Body Works Watermelon Lemonade Gentle Foaming Hand Soap. I really liked the smell of this. It was very nice. I went feel like I went through it very quickly, though. 
Is this one of the ones I got? No. This wasn't one of the ones that I got recently. This was the one I was finishing off. Okay, so I didn't go through it super quickly. I don't know. I like I like Bath and Body Works, okay? It's all fake fragrance, but I like it. The Soap and Glory Sugar Crush Body Scrub, Smash Brown Sugar, Sweet Lime, Almond Oil, Macadamia Grains. It smelt delicious. Um, but it still was kind of more oily than scrubby for what I needed. I am very picky when it comes to my body scrubs. Um, this was fine. It's nice. I would probably not repurchase it though. I want it more scrubby even than this. I finally finished my Mother Dirt Body Oil. This took me absolutely forever in my project pan, but I used it up. It smelt amazing. If you love the smell of sweet almond oil, then you will like this. If you do not, you'll hate this because that is all it smells like. I thought it was fantastic and I really enjoyed it, so. All right, oh, uh, Bliss Makeup Melt Makeup Remover Wipes. I use it to wipe off swatches and lip balm in the morning and clean my pore palette. They're fine. All right. Hair, 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 deodorant. Native Thai Dye Vanilla Baked by Melissa Deodorant. Delicious, very delicious, good stuff. You guys know I really enjoyed Native deodorants. Um, and a Bath and Body Works Watermelon Lemonade Anti-Back. Um, Bugger back. Good stuff. Keep your hands clean. Alright, the only thing that is not hair care is my Real Techniques Brush Cleansing Gel. I use this on my sponge, not my brush because I would use too much to clean my brushes. But it was fine. I prefer the block of soap that I use. It's some, it's a bar of soap that's like good. I don't remember what it is. I like that more and it's way more efficient than this. Like cost effective, not efficient. That's what it meant. All right, and then I have four hair things. The first, I dyed my hair purple for crazy hair day at work. And I used the Live Pastel Blush 2 to 3 wash shampoo. It's, it says up to eight washes. It like washes out of my hair in two. But that's fine. It did what it needed to do. It made my hair purple. It's good stuff if you want something just quick for a bit of colour. The Aveda Shampowder. If you guys... This has can't only be four months old. Maybe it is. I really liked this stuff so much so I went and bought the Briochia version, which I like even more because it has more texture and grit to it to give me a bit more volume. But this stuff is really good. It made me like the spray shampoo. Uh, dry shampoo like this in the powder form and I think it does a fantastic job and I think you should give it a go. Um, the Rumble and Bubble Pret a Powder, this was also in my travel bag and is empty. It was a fine dry shampoo but I feel like I would go through it really quickly. And the Briochio Farewell Freeze Rosarco Milk Leaving Conditioning Spray, this actually was quite nice. I used it up. It stopped my hair being as frizzy. I have obviously chopped all my hair off so I don't need as much help in detangling anymore, but it was good. I enjoyed it. And I feel like that was a very long video. <laughs> but that is all of the things that I've used up in the last three months and my thoughts on them. I feel like by the end I got a bit lazy. Did you see me kind of lean back a bit? But I'm back, I'm awake again, and I have another video to film for you straight after this. So do subscribe to stay tuned for that one. Let me know in the comments down below what you have used up lately. I would love to know. And give this one a thumbs up if you liked it and you like the idea of using up your products. I think that's super important. Um, yeah, click subscribe, this, give this one a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. Bye.